aren't you all ready? Yes. If everybody will come in and take a seat, we will start this special graduation service. Somebody left the Rubik's Cube up here. We will. Okay, everybody, if you come in and have a seat, we will start with the professional. professional. Okay, at this time we are ready.
We have more alumni here than we do graduates, and uh, glad to have the alumni here today, uh, some of which are parents of uh, the graduates as well. We may have been existing for that long now, but uh, we've had graduations. Would not be happening without the role of the alumni here at the museum uh, for years here, uh, as well as my friends and friends, uh, and the members of the museum for so many years. But before we begin, uh, let's bow our heads and let's pray to God for his word. Father in heaven, we thank you for being able to witness and tell us of your. 
for the class of 2019's class gift, uh, we decided on a water fountain, and if you want to find it, it's actually found in the AC. Um, we decided to do a water fountain because there's always a line, it's actually a water bottle for me, there's always a line with a water fountain when every Remar student, every Remar student uh, tries to fill up the water bottle, so we decided to uh, do that. And on it is found a verse. So the seniors went through a series of different fundraisers, including different ones like the Bova fundraiser or um, Spangle fundraisers and a whole bunch of different fundraisers, including going to Mrs. Nelson's house and just um, walking there. And I really appreciate that all the seniors were able to come and help me and uh, Charlotte and Kenzie uh, work on the fundraisers and able to get enough money for this class gift. And special thanks to Mrs. Nelson for helping us to buy the class gift in advance so we could put it in. So it's here today. Thank you. All right, good morning, everyone. All right, Dijak, where are you at? It is my privilege to be standing before all of you today, the friends and the families of my class. Um, I don't think I've ever spoken in front of this many people before. Actually, the last time I did this was back in preschool. Now, I don't know why they had class officers in preschool, but I was the president back then, too. I was supposed to give a speech at preschool graduation, except that time when I was supposed to speak, I got stage fright. They ended up playing a recording of my speech with my older brother and Madeline Lewis. And thankfully, a lot has changed since then. Now I stand as a representative of Remar Academy, class of 2019. And before I deliver my speech, I'd like to have a word of prayer. Uh, Father in heaven, I want to thank you for bringing us this far. It's gone by so fast, Lord, and it seems like I was in preschool seems like eighth grade was, eighth grade graduated yesterday. But today, we are here because of your mercy and because of your guidance. Thank you for being with us every step of the way. I ask, Lord, that as I speak, may you calm my nerves and hand me down. Thank you, God. And I pray all these things in Christ's name. Amen. Pass over to Ray. So, the story begins freshman year. After graduating eighth grade, you can say most of us didn't really know what to expect in high school. My thoughts were, it's just another four years of school, make some friends, and why not have some fun while you're at it? How hard could it be? I recall the first week of my time at the academy. It was then I met my class. I had no idea I'd be stuck with some of you guys for four years. And I'm glad I didn't realize it. I just get it all you. <laughs> Anyways, you could say that we were a lot like we were a lot like this we used to. Scrambled and disoriented. I believe I believe this cube represents our freshman year very well because our freshman year was a puzzle to us and it was our mission to solve it. I remember my first day of class being introduced to the staff and meeting some of the grown-up seniors, which I am today. I especially, I especially remember being introduced to a Miss Lorraine and Mr. Chad inspired subject called Proof, which confused me even more. I saw high school as a puzzle because just like this can't turn it around in any unplanned direction. Otherwise, it'll just get more mixed up. The 
has to start matching colors, and know what's going on where, and establish a closer relationship with God. I recall my first week of prayer, led by Darshan Nablis, and it was the first time I realized how much God really loved me. Knowing God was there for me really helped me, not only throughout my freshman year, but throughout all of high school. And by the time freshman year is over, it can be too long again. By the time freshman year is over, you have solved the first layer of your belief system, but you know you still have a long way to go. Next came sophomore year. To be honest, I believe soft, everyone's sophomore year is the easiest out of the four years of high school. You've made friends and gained experiences from the past, and you don't know, but you don't take the classes or, the, or have the responsibility of the, the upper class in high school. It was a perfect time for me to get, my, no, to, to get to know my classmates better and deepen my walk with them, which is good because there is no way you can get through the last few years of high school without revenge or God. Sophomore year for me was also the past six years. I'm not going to read these. And before I knew it, the next part, I saw the next part of my belief system. After sophomore year came junior year. Junior year is when everything changed. Not only were there major faculty changes, but you were entitled to a lot more power as an upperclassman to influence your school. You become more of a leader than a follower. But you soon realize that things only get harder from here. The freshmen and sophomores look up to you more. You plan junior senior day. You begin to take harder subjects like chemistry, or if you're extra smart, pre calculus like geography. Junior year is all fun until you realize the responsibility that has been given to you. It also wasn't easy, but praise the Lord that you can learn a lot of lessons from trials. As some of you know, I learned how to snowboard that year, and it's not always easy or simple, especially the first three times down the hill. But I learned that it doesn't matter how many times you fall as long as you get back up after. Another thing I learned in my junior year was reliance on Christ. There's no way any of us would be graduating weren't for him. You have to be careful of what you do in your third year because anything can go wrong. If anything goes wrong, it will send you back to square one. Every move you make has to be just right so your senior year is as simple as possible. Now, if you do set it up just right, your senior year shouldn't be as complicated as the first year. You made close friends, Gotten to, got to know the teachers better, grew closer together as a class, and grew closer to Christ. Most of us didn't even have a second or third grade class, lucky, such as you. And unless you're taking math and Sir Michael, your classes have been less stressful. Senior year was a time where you could focus more on being the school heavyweight rather than spending all the time on yourself. And now that college is around the corner, all you have to do is turn those few studies. Psalm 16. Let's go. Now I can say farewell to high school and say hello to college. Uh, whether it's back at high school, we can all admit that it wasn't easy, guys. And that's the way with life. There are always bumps on the road, whether you're at college, finding a life partner, or pursuing any goal. Sometimes we question why we are moving in certain directions, why God leads us in certain ways. 
can see that all that for the past four years we've all had something in common, and that is we've all been trying to prove God wrong. It's written on our uniform. For the past four years, in every action done, in every word spoken, whether it was a good action or a bad action, or a good word or a bad word, we've been proving God right and trying to paint a beautiful picture of God. So I want to take time and thank and congratulate each of my pastors for fulfilling our purpose. And Mr. Chad actually used to do this on a Saturday afternoon during sermon, and I want to bring it back. So as I call your names, please stand and remain standing. Soren. Soren, you are one of the most creative and positive people I know. You're always telling cool stories and coming up with new ideas and inventions. I remember when uh, I went to Bolivia the first year, they gave us a fan to slow us down, but there was no electricity, so we were looking for you to find a solution. But sadly, we were in Arizona that year. Um, I'm sure one day you'll patent one of your ideas and inventions and become successful. Never lose your cheerful attitude, and don't let others bring you down. Soren, as you go to Southern and continue with your life, remember that God is with you, and he loves you very much. Samuel Moses. I remember first meeting you on registration day. You weren't quite as tall then, and your voice was a lot higher. And you've gone a long way since then. I'm very proud of you for surviving the dorm for four years. It's no easy feat. It's made you into a warrior, and I have confidence that you'll succeed in life. Sam, as you go into college and continue with your life, remember that God has a plan for you. Audrey, I've only known you for a short time, but this past school year has shown me that you are a great and funny person. I'll never forget the time we compared answers and argued in physics class, even though I was right most of the time. <laughs> Thanks for taking the role of lost treasure this past semester. Audrey, throughout college and the rest of your life, remember that God has a plan for you, and he loves you very much. Mark, oh, you're probably watching the live stream. Mark, I don't know anyone else who is more determined and strong than you. I remember being in past finance school with you, and I'll never forget the day you lowered your voice so you could seem cooler and older. Thank you for always being willing to stand up for what you think is right. And if, even if it means seeking discomfort, never lose that heart. And as you continue with, with your life, remember that God has a plan for you and that he loves you very much. Amanda. Amanda, you are probably the most positive person I know. I've known you for such a long time, and I will never forget the memories you made in past time years. Cake decorating and the academy. Um, thanks for helping clear up my day when I'm down, and never stop looking on the bright side of things, like you made it to the end. Because college and life can get tough. Amanda, in all that you do, remember that Jesus is your Savior. He has a plan for you, and He loves you very much. Ben. Ben, I don't know anyone who is as calm under pressure as you are. You take stress very easily, and it's a trait I wish I had. Thanks for teaching me and my brothers how to back up. You helped me overcome the fear of just jumping in front of them. Thank you for being a great friend to me, and no matter what anyone says, you will always be my friend. Never lose sight of Christ as you go to Southern and pursue you your life goals. Ben, remember that God has a plan for you, and he loves you very much. Leo, we've been through a lot together. Pathfinder, prior tour, last commission trip, same commission trip, and free cash back are some of the fondest memories I share with you. Ever since I became your friend, I knew that you had my back and will continue to watch out for me. Remember to take before your acts and never stop looking up. Get those muscles, Leo. I look forward to going to college with you and creating more memories. Leo, never forget, never forget that God has a plan for you, and he loves you very much. Rachel, um, not a lot 
and it was always higher than mine. I know that you will do well in college and in life. Never stop climbing and never lose sight of the path. Rachel, remember that God has a plan for you and you'll do great. Jesse. Jesse, you have become one of my closest friends for these past four years. Thanks for being there when I wanted to talk about random things like cars or putting up with my sometimes, sometimes annoying personality. You were an irreplaceable friend, and I will truly miss you as you grow up. Never lose your passion for music and sports, and never let go of Christ. Jesse, remember that God has planned for you, and He loves you very much. Jessica, Jessica, I'm glad I got to know you better these past four years. You've been a great addition to our class. You're one of the funniest people I know and also related when it comes to things like music. But we won't talk about that up here. I won't forget the memories we made in Kenya, and I look forward to creating more memories as we go through college together. Jessica, never forget that Christ died for you. He has a plan for you, and he loves you very much. Mackenzie. Mackenzie, you are one of the greatest people I know. I remember when you first entered during junior year, and I'm glad that you did, because our class just wouldn't function without you. Thanks for being an extremely helpful, helpful member in Boston, and for all the good memories in Arizona and Spain. I'll never forget the time Robin and I put Shirasha on the team, and I just wanted to say I'm sorry. I have confidence that you will succeed in college and throughout life. Mackenzie, when life gets tough, and it will, remember that God has a plan for you. Christ died to save you, and he loves you very much. Isaac, you were one of the best bowlers I know. I don't think I'll ever beat you, even if you played on the wing. It's been a great past few years, and we've made some pretty good memories in school. Thanks for laughing at my jokes, even though they're sometimes not funny. I also wanted to say good luck this year at college. Don't be afraid to be a shining light and speak up when you need to, because Christ has your back. Isaac, don't forget that God has a plan for you, and he loves you very much. Heidi, you were one of the toughest girls I know. I recall when you were coming to Murray Field, you were picking up the heavy rolls of grass, and you were, you were not afraid to get money. With the same hard work and diligence, you will succeed not only in college, but in life. Good luck taking nursing, and hopefully in three years, we'll both pass our boards. Heidi, until then, remember that Christ died for you. He has a plan for you, and he loves you very much. Aiden Lee. You have also become one of my closest friends. I remember first hearing about you from Nico. I knew that once you came here, we'd be best buddies. You taught me a lot of things while you were here at Lee, such as being more patient with myself and thinking things over. You've also taught me how to fish, which I'll be getting more into. I hope you find, I hope I find a friend like you in college. Aiden, you possess a skill to master whatever you're interested in, such as basketball, kendama, music, and even gardening. As long as you make Christ your number one interest, you will succeed in life. Good luck to Andrew and Aiden. Never forget that God has a plan for you, and he loves you very much. Last but not least, Eric Mitchell. Eric, our class would not be complete without you. You have brought so much joy and laughter into your classmates' lives these past four years. I'll never forget the, the rubber band war and the water fight we held in class. Sorry, I was off. But remember this, you still have three or so years at college, so you better watch out. I look forward to creating more memories with you in college. Jokes aside, Eric, remember that God has a plan for you and that he loves you very much. So, we march out of you, class of 2019. As you look back and also move forward with our lives, as we go on and God leads us in different directions, 
Remember to be a shining light in this dark world. Remember all the time you had to learn. And never forget the lessons that you did. God led us through high school. We have nothing to fear in the future, except as we shall see that the way the Lord has done, and teaching from our past experience. Our lives may change as we walk into the future, but remember, we're friends forever. Congratulations to the Weimar class, Academy class of 2019. Keep proving God right. My fondest memories is like when Ben brought brought us like burritos and like that was super cool and like then for my birthday um, we had ramen and they printed out like these horrible pictures of my face <laughs> and like everyone might be like oh that's like horrible why would they do that they're your friends but like that's something that they find really funny and like I don't know I just I love it so much and I love all of them like I don't know they mean like a lot to me and like that's one of my favorite memories here at Weimar and I love choir too and I love Kenya and like those places were cool and they like changed me as a person because like I didn't have great influences where I grew up so this place changed me forever and um one of my fondest memories here at Weimar is probably during my freshman and sophomore years um, where I would go running with some of my friends um, specifically Nick and sometimes Sam and, you know we would just get to talk about what's happening in our lives um, while we're exercising which is pretty cool because I like exercising um, it probably was also this year in the dorm where we played uh, beer pong with Dylan Alex uh, Josh in room number one uh, that room holds a lot of memories for me too and yeah, yeah I think that's some of them. I absolutely love this senior class trip I took to MC France and Geneva Switzerland with my class I got to experience so many new things with some of my favorite people and I love the food I love the culture just the entire place is so beautiful and it's just one of my best memories here at Weimar Academy Overall, some of my fondest memories at Weimar have come from our small little trips. One of the trips that I really enjoyed every year, this year and last year, was Albion. I got the chance to go canoeing with Alec, Leah, and Chantel. At first, I was a little bit frustrated with them because I usually like to canoe and have a very peaceful, quiet time listening to the birds and the trees. But this time, I actually, I had a good time, but I was a little frustrated because they kept tipping us. We dumped like, I don't know how many times, but it was still in the end a really great time. Even though they may have thought I was a little frustrated with them, it's one of my fondest memories. And there was this other time in custodial, we were working there and we walked outside and it started hailing like crazy, but it was, it was big hail, it was huge. And it really hurt, it gave us little welts, but it was just a really good memory, really funny. And just those great random times being with people who you didn't suspect to be with and having just a goofy old time. One of my fondest memories at the Academy would definitely have to be during my sophomore year on choir tour. And it was the first choir tour I ever went on. And it was such an amazing experience because I saw God working in the lives of the people that we sang to. And I also saw God working in my own life as well. And so I remember as we got to the last choir stop we were going to be going on, and we got to the last song, Lord Bless You and Keep You. I remember seeing one of the senior students crying to my left. And it was an interesting for, thing for me to see because for me, I, I was really tired and at that point I just wanted to go home. I wasn't really sad about leaving choir tour even though I had such a great time. But uh, that student was a senior and for them it was a different experience because it was the last choir tour they ever get to go on. And I remember thinking, what will I feel like on my last choir tour, on the last song I'll sing? And so, sure enough, this year, uh, we got to the last stop, the last song, Lord bless you and keep you. And as we were singing, so many memories and emotions came up in me. And I felt God's hand, and he really just touched my heart. And 
uh, it was one of the best memories I had at the Academy. Okay, so in the last four years, some of my favorite memories have been uh, the campouts that I had, especially my first two years. And what I really appreciated about that was the really high spiritual aspect and then just seeing God in nature. And I really appreciated the talks that Mr. Chad gave because he really made God real to us and um, really gave us a true understanding of how spiritual things can be personal and how God can be our friend. So I've made so many great memories here. Um, it's kind of hard to choose, but um, there have been so many little moments um, where it just felt like a family here, especially being welcomed in as a freshman by the seniors. Grounds was so much fun, uh, from every craziness to water fights um, to deep conversations. Wasa last year was amazing, from serious to silly, trying to stay on topic to being kidnapped. Um, and this year, even though none of us have ever put together a yearbook before, um, I really appreciated being able to see all of your creativity and um, just have fun with you. One of the fondest memories uh, in Weimar is um, uh, probably spending time with the seniors in Geneva, France after our mission trip in uh, Kenya. Uh, from, uh, from what I enjoyed, uh, uh, the trip there most is um, the 140-meter 140, 140 uh, Geneva water fountain. And I also enjoyed the food and the desserts there. My fondest memory at Weimar traced back to my sophomore year. That year, I had a blast. I sprayed people with water, and as usual, I cracked jokes on a daily basis. I was able to experience life at its fullest. I will always remember high school as a time where my relationship with God grew deeper. I was able to discover new, new truth I never knew before, like, um... Perhaps the most important lesson I learned is that Weimar Academy's environment is created for you to get closer to God. What are my fondest memories of Weimar? Well, there's too many, so I'm not going to choose, and I'm just going to list them all. <laughs> um, there was the time Mrs. Glant dressed up like a squirrel, and Mr. Matt, and Mr. Mike, and Mr. Chad tried to um, catch her. There was the time we were on a mission trip in Bolivia, and our truck got stuck in the water, and um, we had to be pulled out. And actually, there was another time on that trip where we left half the choir behind because they didn't hear Miss Tara yelling. Um, there was the time we tried to interrogate Miss Abby's boyfriend. There was the time we tried to interrogate Freya's boyfriend. Neither worked. Um, there was the time we were in La Paz airport and we all got altitude sickness. We couldn't walk straight. There was all the times Michaela and I would sneak over to the farm at 5.30 in the morning. There was the times Mackenzie and I would run screaming to the AC because we thought someone was chasing us in the dark. Uh, there was the times Mr. Chad showed us who Christ is really like. Um, when Ms. Tara told us to plan, plan, plan. Um, when Miss Abby taught us about music. There's been a lot of things this year. Being a four-year academy student at Weimar was uh, a great experience, and I have a ton of memories from it, but my, one of my favorite memories is from choir tour, um, junior-senior day, from work, from just being at school, um, being with the kids. Um, our, the, the, our school is very like a family, kind of academy so everybody knows each other really well and you bond like throughout the year um, but one of my favorite memories is um, just seeing our class evolve throughout the years um, when I was a freshman we our class was very disorganized and we just shouted each other when we had meetings and nothing got done but now that we're all grown up and uh, seniors uh, it's changed so much and we've learned a ton uh, Planning Junior Senior Day was a great experience. We had a lot of help from parents because we had no idea what we were doing. But it came down to the wire, but it ended up working really well. And enjoying our time with the day with the seniors was just a great experience. 
One of my fondest memories from the Academy was sophomore year, I think it was, when we had to plan either the Christmas party, I think it was actually the agape feast, decoration. And we are all in the idea room, uh, at the whiteboard, throwing ideas around, but people were really uh, thinking of, of really creative ideas. I was like, all right, doesn't matter what it is you're gonna say, just say something that we could use to get inspiration for what we're using for the decorations. And uh, Jack Fonslow immediately yells, Volcano! And then I think someone else said, Tropical! We all laughed about it, like, haha, an agape feast in fall, and have it tropical themed? That's ridiculous, it's gonna be cold, it's gonna be awful. And then we had a tropical theme for the agape feast. That was interesting. One of my fondest memories from Mimar would probably be rafting this year with the guys. It was really fun. Dangerous too, but it was fun. Um, just hanging out with the guys. Um, no need to, you know, no distractions. Um, just us guys and God. So before coming here, I didn't really have a devotional life, and I'd go throughout my day not really doing much or even taking time out of my day to even really spend in the morning with him. But when I got here, there's a specific time that is dedicated for us to have a personal relationship with him. And I really appreciate that because now I'm able to go and read the Bible or just read a good spiritual book in the morning and be able to start off my day with him. I think one of the important things that God has taught me at the Academy is that my connection with God needs to be personal. It can't be someone else's religion, it needs to be my own. Something that Weimar has taught me over the past four years is reliance on Him. You know, there's no way I could have been, there's no way I could have gone through these four years without Him. And He's just really showing me that and throughout my whole life, I will need to rely on Him to get through it. And what I've learned throughout the academy is probably mostly perseverance, getting through hard things, working with uh, difficult circumstances and difficult people. And I've learned to just push through no matter what. And yeah, I think that's one of the main things. Also, I've learned that no matter what happens and no matter what you're up against, God is there for you. My freshman year, Mr. Chad was our Bible teacher. And one of the really great things about him is he would do lots of discussions in Bible class, which really grew my relationship with God, with me, not for my parents or for my friends, but for me. And another thing is sometimes instead of just simply reading the Bible and studying the Bible, he would take us out to someone's house, kind of like how we do TCI now. It's like acts of service and we'd help people with their lawn or whatever they needed. This really impacted me because it showed me that sometimes the greatest thing we can learn about Jesus is by being like him, by doing the things that he did, by helping people, even if it seems so simple and so insignificant, and giving your time. Your time really, really helps people, even if you think you don't know what to say to them in their time of need. So what God showed me this year is um, he showed me that I can't do things on my own. And um, that's really hard because I'm very independent and I'm very stubborn. <laughs> and um, I also have learned that I need to be patient because I struggled a lot this year. And it's a long process. I have a long ways to go. But yeah, that's what I learned from God this year and I'm still learning. God taught me the importance of trust, like really how important it was. Uh, in a small school like Weimar County, news just spreads like that, and you really have to think about what you say and what you hear and if it's true or not. As a new student coming into a class basically with a lot of four-year students who've been basically a group for that long, I thought it would be pretty hard to build those relationships. But I just felt so accepted in my class and so loved and cared by so many people, and I'm so grateful for it. Them, to them for making it possible and 
just God has really shown me how important that is. And just if that trust is broken, it is incredibly hard to fix. So I'm, I'm really appreciative to so many people and to God for helping me throughout this year. Something that God has really taught me here at my time in the academy is to definitely live in the moment. And by that I mean, if we're always looking forward to something in the future, or we're, perhaps we're regretting something in the past, we are not able to experience to the fullest the things that God wants us to right now. And so, I guess what I'm trying to say is, live every moment as, it's, as if it is your last, and trust in God's plan for your life. Um, God has shown me a lot of different things throughout my four years, and I figured out life is not about you, it's not about me, it's not about any of us, it's, it's about Him, and it's about proving Him right and proving Satan wrong, and we're just here to help Him do that and change the world. One of the greatest things God taught me here is the difference between popularity and spirituality. Um, with popularity, it closing, closes you off to deep and meaningful friendships, um, but with spirituality, it opens you up to uh, many more friendships because you are following God's will and um, reaching out to others. What God has shown me here at Weimar Academy is the number one thing that He showed me is probably to rely on Him and not anyone else. Um, a lot of people may fail you. I know a lot of people let me down, but I just realized that um, if I look to God, um, I can be sure that He'll never fail me and I can always hold on to that promise. I think God has taught me uh, for the past three years in high school was that. Um, to be uh, more generous to others and to be more dedicated to God. Um, short story, during my middle school years, uh, I enrolled to uh, Seventh-day Adventist School uh, down in Southern California, and uh, I was influenced uh, to love the world instead of God. And um, I was uh, a, a different person at that time. So uh, once I uh, moved here, and. Uh, Northern California to see the school. I had a, a heartless desire to uh, take my uh, high school education here. But, um, but after three years here, and uh, m my heart had softened and uh, was renewed by God's love toward me. And, um, my life was changed because of friends, um, spiritual education, and through the power of prayer. When I first came to Weimar, I really thought of it as a perfect place where everybody had their spiritual life together. And um, I think I hoped that somehow being here would give me the same spiritual level, I guess. Um, and I did feel closer to God, uh, I really did, the first few months. But as I started becoming comfortable in the Weimar routine, and I copied what other people did around me, I started to feel empty, I started to feel complacent. Um, it just wasn't the same as when I had first come. And somewhere in between, I started actually losing the faith in God that I had gotten when I first came. Um, and it got to the point where I was like, I don't even think God's real. Um, so while I was at this place in my life, um, my one friend and I decided randomly that we were going to go and swim in the little creek that runs through the trails. Um, but this was in the middle of a storm and everything was flooded and I don't know why we decided to do this, but we did. Um, but of course we got in the water and we were immediately pulled downstream and I couldn't get my footing, she couldn't get my get her footing. I caught onto the edge of the bank and she grabbed onto me and we started praying and it turned from like begging God in her head to save us to yelling and screaming 
that we would get out. And to this day, I still don't know what happened, but suddenly we were on dry ground again. And there's no physical way that we would have been able to get out of the water. Um, but walking away from that experience, I kept asking God, why? Why did you save me? I didn't even believe in you. I don't do anything for you, God. Why me? And I got this impression that it's not what you do that saves you. It's, it, it's not. It's not the acts you do. It's, it's not the prayers you pray or, or the perfect religion you have. You have to have a dependence on God, um, above all else. He's waiting for you. To ask for Him to be in your life. He's waiting for you to beg to be to be in your life um, and all of us have a purpose we may not know what it is now I don't think I know my purpose right now but I know he saved me because he has a special work for my life and he's gonna show me
you're ready for these words. But all this happened in some drama, right? You're ready for the official words, saying that you have graduated. But hold on, not so fast. I would like to speak with you just for a few moments, Paul answered that. If you thought seem like they will fly by in less than half a minute. And so I have a question for you. What will you be doing for your kingdom? Where will you be planning to fulfill God's plan for your life? The fact is, fewer than 20% of Seventh-day Adventist graduates will ever work of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. What about the rest of you? Will you start entrepreneurial positions? Will you go as, as self-supporting missionaries? Or will you join the workforce across America? I'm familiar with one company who right now has been looking for Seventh-day Adventist graduates. There are 90 positions open across the U.S., and for the last two years, one of the main recruiters for a local company has been looking for Seventh-day Adventists. And yet in two years, not one single Seventh-day Adventist has been hired. Why is the world looking for Seventh-day Adventist graduates? Because you're ethical. You have high standards. You have integrity, honesty, and good, youthful living, all in your favor. These principles that you have learned as a Seventh-day Adventist growing up or here at Weimar Academy will take you far. There will be many people that will come to you saying, my life is a mess. How can I get my health straightened out? And you will have the opportunity to reach the mission of Weimar Institute to help heal. Not just a hurting world, but a colleague who's become your friend and co-worker. What does it take to qualify for a position? Why weren't graduates accepted? Why didn't they? in the last two years, get hired by this company I've mentioned. Do you think that someone is going to be there waiting to take you and say, now you, I would like to introduce you to your new employer? We've heard of placement organizations. We have heard of placement departments at universities. But I can assure you, for the most part, they are very, very ineffective. We have a God that we trust. And yet if you're like I was at Academy, I had not yet quite found him to be totally immersed in my daily life. If there's something I will be praying for each of you is that you will find the God who has been very close to you all along as you search for him with your whole heart. And after you've taken time today and in the next few days to celebrate over your accomplishments, my prayer is that you will buckle down and seriously say, what am I going to do four years from now? One of the things I am trying to encourage young people to do is right now as a freshman, excuse me, you're seniors now, in a couple of minutes you're gonna be freshmen. <laughs> What I would like to encourage you as freshmen to do is to begin looking seriously at what you will be doing four years from now and begin asking those who are in the field already or those who are doing the hiring, what does it take to work for your organization four years from now? How can I prepare my life to be of best service? 
And so if you do that, you will come back into the classroom and say, hey, I've got to learn this. It's not just for an exam. It's not just for an assignment. But it's to change your life direction so that you can be a co-worker privileged to wa work with the God of the universe. And so today, I will remind some of you that haven't made a decision, Weimar College is still open, but I warn you, it isn't for long. Already, we are projecting an increase in enrollment of nearly 30% and possibly more. We are now having waiting lists since Weimar has been recently accredited. We have a huge list this week we will be looking at. And if we look at that list and there are no more openings, we're going to have to put them only on a waiting list. So apply for a scholarship early if that's what you need. May God bless you as you decide. So it doesn't matter from, from my perspective where you go. What matters is will you choose God to guide you in your choice and where you're going so that you can mount up with wings as eagles and do the work God has called you to do. And now, will the Weimar Academy graduating class of 2019 please stand? Now, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Directors as Vice President of Academic Affairs of Weimar Institute, and by virtue of Weimar Academy operating within the Educational Code of the State of California, and upon the recommendation of the faculty and staff, I confer on these candidates the diplomas for which they have been recommended. Weimar Academy, Class of 2019, congratulations. You have now graduated. As the graduates line up, families uh, who wish to greet them on this side may, um, may move that way. with the families. In honor of meeting all the requirements for a Weimar Academy diploma, we would like to recognize Charlotte II, Cabby Bermudez. Rachel Christina Cooper. <laughs> Jessica Elizabeth Frappier.
Mackenzie Renee Jazerski. Aiden Joseph Yen Kai Lee. Amanda Faith McCraw. Joseph Mitchell. Samuel David Mosier. Soren Alexander Nelson. Isaac Christopher Florencio Neri. Jesse Allen Ross. Leo Souza Seidel. Heidi Katrina Supit.
Audrey Grace Umali. At this time, if the parents would uh, come back to the front here along the front of the platform for a special prayer of dedication. So parents, with your graduates, if you'd come forward here at this time. I'm not gonna be able to kneel down today. So we'll, we'll, we'll stand if you'll take and put your arms around your young ones in this accomplishment, they have just completed another milestone in their, in their journey of life. It's really exciting to see these young people, what they've done this year, and they've made it to the end, finished strong. As we all bow our heads, we'll have a, a few moments of silent prayer, and then, I'll, then I will close with a, uh, a prayer at the end. So at this time, let's, parents, have a prayer with your young people. Dear Father, as these parents have their arms around these young people, Lord, and they care for them deeply, Lord, how much more you care for them than even we do as parents. Lord, you've sustained these young people through the trials that they en encountered this year and throughout life, Lord, and we thank you that you will allow them to see even in the midst of trials that you're there for them and that they can gain new insight and learn new things. Lord, bless them that they start this new journey moving on to college lord as they seem to almost start over as freshmen again lord just may they know that you are close that you are there whenever they need you that they can call upon you may they learn to lean upon you more each day as we all grow we thank you for your mercy lord we thank you for forgiving us and giving us a new start lord and i just pray you be these young people as they start a new start after today as it seems again, we pray in this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Okay, seniors, have a seat.
junior class of 2019, will you please stand? Can you believe this is happening? Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to present to you the Weimar Academy Senior Class of 2020. Okay, so we have a few announcements before we end. The same ones you've been hearing all weekend. Um, bathrooms are in the main AC, continue to sidewalk after the parking lot, and there will be some light refreshments up by the girls' dorm, and we'd love to have you there. And Tanner will pay for us. So let's close off this weekend with a word of prayer. Please bow your heads with me. Heavenly Father, Lord, I want to thank you for this senior class of 2019, Lord. I want to thank you for the blessing that they have been to the school, and I want to thank you for their leadership. And Lord, as we move on to being the senior class of next year, Lord, I just ask that you would help us to be the leaders that you have called us to be. Help us to just set the school on fire for you and to be a proper example. Lord, I also just want to ask that you would continue to be with the rest of us staying here at the academy and um, continuing our education here. Lord, I just ask that you would just continue to work in our lives and become a personal God, as much as the seniors have shared this year. It's not this school's God, it's not our parents' God, but Lord, we are called to be your children, and you are supposed to be our God personally. So Lord, I just ask that as we move on from this place today, um, that would be a reality for all of us in all of our lives. I ask all these things in your name. Amen.